Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 34. In this tutorial we are going to create the phone UI that we're going to use as the starting point for our first mission. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. Phone UI is actually quite simple. The whole idea of it is down here in the bottom right corner. I just want a phone to pop on screen and uh, we have a message, you know, we're just kind of basic to start off with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to import uh, two separate things into Unity. One is going to be a phone image that we're going to use as a sprite and the other is going to be a quick sound effect that we'll use when the phone pops up. So firstly, let's go to uh, audio. Let's go to effects. And I'm going to import this message alert. There we go. And next, let's go to textures. And let's import this phone UI right there. So what we need to do with the phone UI is select it and change the texture type to sprite. Uh, let's generate mitmaps and let's click apply. Now we can use this as a a standard image rather than a raw image and it looks all funny on screen. So let's actually place this um, UI on our screen now. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to image and I'm going to turn off that fade in once again so we can see our screen a little better and I know at the moment we do have a lot of uh, UI on screen when we shouldn't. Don't worry about that, we'll clean it all up as we go along. So let's put this into place, maybe somewhere here I'm thinking, but I would like it to be slightly off screen. So not all of the phone displays on the screen, kind of give the impression of holding it maybe. So let's anchor that down at the bottom right, and then let's drag and drop our phone UI onto the source image. And then let's expand this. So it's roughly the right kind of size. Let's have it maybe 400 by 400 and let's move it to maybe about there and see what it looks like. Yeah, that should be okay. I think we'll stick with that. So next thing we need to do is add a couple more elements to this. Um, it's going to be like messages that we have. So we're going to start with um, some text on there. In fact, we'll rename it firstly. Um, let's rename it to phone and then in that phone let's right click and go to UI and text and this text is going to say um, something like come and meet the boss in South Las Meadows something like that so come and meet me in South Las Meadows and what can we call this guy? I don't know, Tony B. That'll do. Uh, let's adjust this message size. And what I'd also like to do is add a little bit of extra to it. So I might actually add in a raw image. So right click on text, uh, UI raw image, and I know it'll cover it, but let's have this a slight gray color. And let's move it into position, maybe about there, like so, so it covers the text. And then drag it out, and then place the text inside that raw image. So I'm going to call this as message A, and then that will be the text of message A, as we can see. Should be okay. I might change that ever so slightly. I'm thinking maybe change the text size to come to about there and bring that to about there, bring it up slightly. I mean, I'm taking uh, this real quick, to be honest, you should probably take this much slower <laughs> and do it a little bit better. So what we're also going to do is create another message. So hold control, press D, uh, D to duplicate, sorry. and Let's bring it to about there and I'm going to change the color to a bluish kind of color. Something like that. And let's have the text as 
white and let's see how that looks okay so you can see the kind of imagery we're going for here and this text can say on my way with a couple of exclamation marks because why not let's rename this to message b and i'm just going to shrink um, so what i'm going to do is just drag text out of message b shrink the message b size to about there and then recouple text back into message b so everything looks about right now awesome so next thing we need to do is let's turn off message B and let's turn off the phone. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create a quick sequence of events. When we get to the mission start point, we're going to have the phone come up on screen with that first message. And then a couple of seconds later, we're going to send that message to say that we're on our way. So let's get all of that in order. So we've got the UI in place. That's all good. I'm going to double click on contract killer just to zoom into our screen and we're going to want to deal with this section right here. So this is going to be our trigger point. And what I'm thinking of doing is adding an extra um, trigger point onto here. So we're going to use, let's say, a cube because cubes are always easy to use they're always easy to deal with so on that mission 01 start let's right click let's click 3d object let's go with cube and let's increase the cube size to let's say no i guess it doesn't matter too much let's have 20 so it's a fairly decent size let's untick mesh renderer and then let's tick is trigger so this is now set up for us to attach a script to that we can start this particular mission. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's create a new folder in here. And let's call this missions. And let's right click, create a new C sharp script and we'll call this M001. And the M is just short for mission, I guess. So they're going to be all numbered in this respect. And like I said, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a quick sequence of events. So it's when we trigger this first mission, we get our phone up, like I say, and then we send the message. And then obviously we're going to need to kind of carry on a little bit through this uh, mission creation over the next couple of tutorials. But generally what we're doing here is creating the foundations that we can use to create multiple different types of missions. So just keep in mind what we're doing here and then try and adapt this later on if you want to create more versatile missions. So as soon as Visual Studio has loaded, you guys know what I'm on about. <laughs> Sometime today. Anyway, I should probably explain what the plan is. So we're going to have a guy who is further down um, in the area. And we're going to walk up to him when we've triggered this mission. And we're going to have a little small cutscene where he tells us what we're going to do. And then we go from there. So we need to establish the order of what we're doing and what we're doing it to. So let's start with a couple of variables. So the whole idea of what this is going to initiate is essentially just um, a, a script which says, we're on this location, it's time to do something. It's time to uh, get things going. So what I want to do, the order I want to do it in is I want to get into here I want everything to start, but I want the minimap location to disappear straight away. But I want this mission start point to still exist until we've actually started the mission. So that'll be the last thing to disappear. So we need to reference um, a couple of different things. Let's say the minimap location, uh, the mission start point, um, the phone, and our message that we're sending, as well as the sound effect for the phone. So that's five different things. So let's start with public game object mini map lock short for location public game object 
um, mission start point, which is the orange circle. Next, public game object are phone and public game object um, sent message and public audio source and we'll call this phone fx so all of this is going to be done inside a coroutine simply because it's a sequence of events so we don't need void update or void start they can go we do however need to have i enumerator and we'll call this mission begin open close bracket open curly bracket and the first thing we're going to want to do is disable the box collider of this mission start point simply because we don't want to start this mission over and over and over and over because you will end up infinitely looping here so this dot game object dot get component spiky brackets box collider oh close bracket dot enabled equals false that's the first thing done next thing let's get rid of that mini map location so mini map lo lock again shop location dot set active false so that has disappeared next we need to have the phone appear on screen so our phone dot set active true semicolon and then we also need to play the phone sound effect so phone effects dot play oh close bracket semicolon and then we'll wait for let's say three seconds to read that message and then we'll send our own message so let's say yield <clears throat> return new wait for seconds in brackets three and again that can be longer or shorter depending on what you want to do this is where you customize it for your own preference after we've done that we'll say sent message dot set active true semicolon and then we'll wait again so yield return new wait for seconds and we'll just wait for two seconds this time semicolon and last two things we need to do is to turn off the phone and turn off the mission start point so mission start point dot set active false semicolon but before that we need to have our phone dot set active false as well now we will be adding a bit more to this script um, most likely next tutorial when we bring in um, Tony B as it were um, so keep in mind that we will probably need to do more to this script so for now what we need to do is just have um, a method for when we enter this particular trigger to start this coroutine so let's have void on trigger enter doesn't need to be private and let's just have in here start coroutine mission begin oh close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so it's a fairly simple script because um, it's only a short sequence of events. So let's head back into Unity now. And we're going to need to add a um, sound effect. So let's get, to, I can't remember, we've got our sound effects. They're on, on our player, aren't they? So sound effects, uh, footstep two. Let's duplicate footstep two. And in place of that, let's have um where's it gone message alert right there and let's rename that to message alert so next thing we need to do is on the mission start point we have that cube so let's have this as mission trigger and then we just need to attach the script we've written to that mission trigger so right there m001 onto there so minimap lock let's start by putting that in there 
mission start point is that one our phone sent message is message b and phone effects is the one we've just created message alert so i'm going to save that and hopefully we're going to test this out now with no problems fingers crossed oh tell you what we'll actually do this so as it looks like it should do i'm going to put fade in back on there we go and we'll see how this pans out hopefully it should be okay and I think it's worth pointing out that although we have those messages on the phone, you can customise them you know, for different points in the game anyway, so it's not a big deal right now. So we should be able to go over here. Okay, well, that kind of works. But the phone effects did not trigger, did it? So... Why did the phone effect not play? Or did it and I just didn't hear it? I cannot remember. Let's see what it sounds like. It's not an empty file, is it? Okay, so it sounds like that. So let's see, why did that not work? Tell you what, I might actually do. I might just start again with that. So effects, I'm going to go create empty. Just make sure I'm not doing anything silly here. And effects. And then message alert. Let's leave play on awake just to see if it actually works in game. Yeah, so it will play. Fine, so let's untick play on awake. Let's rename to message alert and let's re-add that back into mission trigger save and let's try this once again there's always something which uh, <laughs> goes wrong so I'm not quite sure why it wouldn't have worked the first time but let's Check this out. So it did it again. It didn't. It didn't play the sound. I wonder why. I wonder why. What if we add it to mission zero zero one start and have it there? Oh, of course. I just realised we had it on contract killer fake. That's in. <laughs> That is uh, terrible. So let's put it on our actual player. There we go. There we go. Now I know this will work. If you were screaming at the, at the screen saying, Jimmy, you put it on the wrong one, please comment below and tell me. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's finally test this and then I'll discuss what we're doing next tutorial. Come meet me, Southlast Meadows, Tony B, on my way. And there we go. That entire sequence is working as intended. So, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in another character. And we're going to place him down. And we're also going to have him spawn only when we actually have the mission active. And when we have it active, we are going to basically allow it so as we can go up to him and get things going. So yeah, that's all to come next tutorial. Till then guys, thank you very much for watching.